Death Stranding has been called a lot of things. Immersive and a masterpiece by its fans, repetitive and pretentious by its critics. One of the most common labels it received and the easiest to agree upon is Walking Simulator, though whether that's a good or bad thing depends on who you ask. Released in November 2019, Death Stranding is a third person action game from the mind of Hideo Kojima and his studio, Kojima Productions. I won't do a detailed plot summary here, beyond telling you it's a weird story that's full of plot holes, a little bloated, but saved by some incredible performances and memorable characters. Instead, I want to focus on how Death Stranding handles player movement, why those elements were so divisive, and explain why I see it as the game's most outstanding achievement. Death Stranding puts players in control of Sam Porter Bridges as he travels across the remains of a post-apocalyptic America. For at least the first few hours, Sam must walk everywhere, with only some climbing ropes and portable ladders to help him on his journey. As the game progresses, players are given access to vehicles and exoskeletons, as well as the ability to build roads and zip lines, all of which makes getting around much easier. If you paid attention to the critics and some of the more negative reviews, you've no doubt heard that the controls in Death Stranding are difficult to master. Though there's some truth to that, I do think it was a little overblown. When I finally got the Platinum Trophy for completing 100% of Death Stranding, I had just over 135 hours on the clock, and the in-game tumble counter told me I fell over a grand total of 16 times. That's one fall every 8.5 hours. The reason I bring this up is to show that staying upright in Death Stranding isn't as hard as some people might have led you to believe. It can be a challenge, but that's also by design. I want to go back to the walking simulator label for a moment and focus on what a simulator is in video games. Let's take Gran Turismo for example. It's a driving simulator, and though it superficially has a lot in common with Ridge Racer, the two are very different games. One is about simulating reality. The other is about breaking free from it. Both have their place, and neither is objectively better than the other. In this regard, Death Stranding is Gran Turismo. Your movements require active thought, and though it takes a while to get used to, the depth of the controls make for a richer experience. It's not something that would work in all games, and I don't think a title like Grand Theft Auto V would benefit from copying Death Stranding's controls, but I also don't think all third person action games should feel the same. The developers clearly spent a lot of time making sure Sam had a sense of weight and presence within the game world. As an example, using the L2 and R2 triggers on your controller, you can control Sam's arms and tell him to pull the weight of his cargo to one side. This can be used to counteract the gradient of the terrain, or you can pull both triggers to have Sam brace himself. This slows down his movement slightly, but stabilizes him when going downhill or crossing a river. These nuanced controls work well within Death Stranding's environment and challenge players to think ahead by planning out routes and scanning their environment. The game doesn't hold your hand, so it's up to you to forge your own path and take the correct gear for your journey. These are just a few examples, but what I'm trying to show is how Death Stranding goes out of its way to make you feel connected to Sam and the world around him. Personally, I enjoyed the parts where I knew I had a large distance to cover and would need to pack enough supplies to make it to the next way station. Without this level of detail, traversing mountains, crossing rivers, and even combat encounters wouldn't feel as visceral or engaging. None of this is to say criticism of Death Stranding is unwarranted, but I think that with any work of art, the creator's intent should at least be taken into consideration. In my opinion, I think Hideo Kojima's intent was to ground Sam within the game world and allow the player to feel every bump in the road with him. We're supposed to struggle alongside him, but we're also given the tools we need to persevere and overcome. As the old Chinese proverb goes, failure is not falling down, but refusing to get up. Despite the fact I consider it the greatest game of 2019, I didn't make this video to change anyone's mind about Death Stranding. Instead, I want to encourage those who love video games to experience it at some point, if only to see firsthand what the creators were trying to achieve. The history of video games is not just a long list of good and bad games, it's also one of weird and experimental titles. Some games push the boundaries of what the medium can be, others get a lot wrong but bring new ideas to the table. Where Death Stranding will eventually fall on that list remains to be seen, but I believe it will be remembered as an innovative game that taught players new ways to walk so that future games can show us new ways to run. 
hey thank you for watching uh, if you enjoyed the video please consider leaving a like and maybe subscribing uh, my social media stuff is on the screen right now if you want to follow me anywhere and uh, yeah that's everything thanks again and I'll see you on the next video okay bye for now